Hello, I'm Kimilia and this is Kini News. Perikata National is gathering information about the alleged threats faced by its MPs before filing a police report, says Secretary General Hamza Zainuddin. This comes after two Bersatu MPs pledge support for Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. Kita sedang mengumpulkan semua maklumat kerana kita ambil gambar-gambar mereka yang berjumpa dengan kita. Kita nak tengok sama ada Uh, orang ini datang daripada mana dia mudah je dia akan jawab saya buat ni kerana saya sayangkan PMX tu je dan PMX boleh jawab saya tak kenal pun orang ni biasa je ok jadi yelah boleh report boleh report tapi kita juga tahu bahawa ini adalah jawapan yang akan diberikan yang pentingnya stop from doing this sort of things itu yang paling penting kepada kita Hamza was commenting on calls to lodge a police report regarding his allegation that Kuala Kangsa MP Iskandar Zulkarnain Abdul Khalid was blackmailed to support Anwar's premiership. Anwar told the PN Secretary General to prove his claim by submitting evidence to authorities so they could investigate. The Larod MP made the claim on October 13th, a day after Iskandar issued a press statement saying that he now supports the Prime Minister, albeit insisting that he was still loyal to the opposition party. MACC denied the allegation and the police said that no report has been made on the matter. Bersatu's leadership had also issued a show-cause letter to Iskandar. On October 30th, Labuan MP Suhaili Abdurrahman also voiced support for Anwar's premiership, citing the rising cost of living in his constituency. In another development, two PN lawmakers claimed that they were offered positions and projects in return for defecting and pledging support for Prime Minister. Kubang Pasu MP Ku Abdul Rahman Ku Ismail and Besut MP Che Muhammad Zulkifli Juso revealed this during a press conference at PN headquarters today. Aku dapat uh, WhatsApp Dia rasuah daripada seseorang Ini dia ada study kita punya background eh. uh, Tempat kita tu ada apa Ada walk ke apa Ada tamat ke uh, Dia cadang untuk nak buat uh, hotel Beauty di kawasan saya Kebang Pusat Berdekatan dengan Daraman Golf Club So mungkinnya dia cukup Setagi lah Saya tu blok je lah Nombor tu saya tak boleh jadi Saya baru menerima Satu email daripada Datuk Rizal nama dia. Oh, sebut nama tu. Rizal Adaham. Semua nama siapa? Sebut nama siapa? Sakam. Proposal pembangunan hotel 40 bilik dilengkapi kolam renang dan pasar raya runcit di Parlimen Besut dengan Both lawmakers said this when asked to comment on Tasik Golugor MP Wan Saifu Wanjan's claims that attractive offers were given as a reward to opposition MPs in exchange for leaving their party. Apart from building hotels, the offers included an invitation to lead a government-linked company, GLC. Bila berjumpa, bukan cerita pasal hotel. Kita yang berhormat. Cukuplah yang berhormat. Rakyat lebih musaha. Bajet dah tak ada. Rakyat nak begini, 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 begini. Jadi sokonglah Anwar. Sokonglah PMX. Sokong saja, dapatlah. Ha, dah mula masuk bab itu. Malaysia Kini, however, cannot independently verify the lawmakers' claims. Moving on, Putrajaya will examine a motion passed in the U.S. on sanctioning foreign supporters of Hamas. The proposed law is named Hamas International Financing Prevention Act and was passed in the U.S. House of Representatives on November 1st. The government is currently monitoring the decision of the United States House of Representatives to pass a bill regarding restrictions on foreign entities that support Hamas and the Islamic Jihad movement in Palestine. Foreign Minister Zamri Abdul Qadir said the ministry will thoroughly examine the contents of the bill before taking further action. He told this to reporters after attending the Diploma in Diplomacy graduation ceremony at the Institute of Diplomacy and Foreign Relations in Kuala Lumpur on Thursday. The Hamas and other Palestinian terrorist groups, International Financing Prevention Bill, requires the U.S. president to impose sanctions against foreigners who knowingly provide significant financial, material or technological support to certain militant groups in Palestine. These groups are Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, 
Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade, the Lion's Den or any affiliate or successor thereof. The President is required to come up with a list of countries within 90 days and impose economic sanctions against these supporters within 180 days after the bill becomes law. The bill will next be considered by the U.S. Senate. Previously, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim said the U.S. had in three instances pressured Malaysia into reviewing its stance on Hamas after it refused to brand the latter as a terrorist group. Donate to Kini TV to show your support and help us sustain as an independent online news portal that delivers breaking news. Do support us. Your contribution matters. Political detractors have accused Parti Kadilan Rakyat of being affiliated with a pro-Israeli group amid the Israel-Hamas war that is happening in Gaza at the moment. PKR has refuted claims that it is a member of Liberal International, a body which had recently expressed solidarity with Israel. Its information chief Fahmi Fadzil said the insinuation that PKR is a member of the body, which comprises of liberal political parties around the world, was a calculated scheme. Fahmi meanwhile reaffirmed that PKR stands in full solidarity with the Palestinian people and they strongly condemn the cruelty of the Israeli Zionist regime. This came after a clip went viral on X, which apparently showed that PKR is listed as an observer, member party in Asia, on the organization's website. The website also shows that Grakan also holds a similar membership status in the group. Malaysia Kini has reached out to Grakan President Dominic Lau for comments. On October 7th, Liberal International stated that it stood in solidarity with the people of Israel, condemned attacks against civilians, and recognized Israel's right to defend itself. Later on October 14th, the group said they were deeply concerned about threats to the lives and homes of civilians in besieged Gaza. Malaysians are hilariously expressing their concern over the national service, including adults up to 35 years old. Many took to social media, including those who were adamant about not attending the program if they are selected. The government's decision to reintroduce the national service training program was met with ridicule and sarcasm by some netizens. This came after Defence Minister Mohamed Hassan informed the parliament about the government's decision to revive the program after it was discontinued in 2018. He said the revival of the program was based on the findings of a special committee that recommended it to the cabinet. Mohamed said that under the PLKN Act, youths up to the age of 35 could be drafted for the training program, but only by presidents that SPM fresh graduates aged 17 to 18 have been drafted. The next round of drafting could additionally involve Form 4 students. Some netizens have joked that the atmosphere would be awkward and have voiced that placing recruits of different age groups together would present new challenges. Working adults have also chimed in that their daily routines would be radically altered if they were drafted. Meanwhile, in response to a question from Sungai Petani MP Muhammad Taufik Johari, Muhammad Hassan said that the new program would only take 45 days instead of the previous three months. He mentioned that the previous program incurred 50 million ringgit per year, while the new one is proposed to not exceed 100 million ringgit per year. Meanwhile, in a statement today, the Ministry of Defence has cleared the air surrounding questions raised regarding the age limit for PLKN. Only teenagers born in 2007 will be called to the National Service Training Program PLKN 3.0 next year. According to the Ministry of Defense, trainees will be chosen according to their year of birth and the maximum age of participation is 35. In a statement, MindDef said if the chosen teenager cannot attend the National Service Training due to reasons that are allowed, they can ask for a postponement. Previously, the government's announcement that under the PLKN Act, youths up to the age of 35 could be drafted for the training program was greeted with ridicule and sarcasm by netizens. The PLKN Act actually states that a proclamation by the Yang Dipertuan Agong would determine the age group of those being drafted for training. The proclamation must not draft those who are younger than 16 or older than 35. However, by president, those picked to join the training program in the last two rounds of PLKN have primarily been SPM fresh graduates who are 17 to 18 years old, save for those who deferred service pending their studies. 
Consumers in Sabah and Sarawak can breathe a sigh of relief as the diesel subsidy retargeting program does not involve the two Borneo states. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has stated that the retargeting of diesel subsidy in phases will only be carried out in peninsular Malaysia. Anwar said the adjustments will not be implemented in Sabah and Sarawak due to the extensive use of diesel in the two states. He stressed that studies must be done to assess the impact before rolling out such reforms in Sabah and Sarawak. Anwar also added that the total fuel subsidy costs have reached 81 billion ringgit, whilst noting that the blanket subsidy is also being enjoyed by foreign nationals and the rich. Meanwhile, he also makes a point that subsidized diesel for the fisher folk will continue at 1 ringgit 65 cents per litre. The subsidized public transportation, including school buses and vans, remains at 1 ringgit 88 cents per litre. He reaffirmed his hope that such fuel subsidy reforms are accepted as they are needed to reduce the government's financial burden. To date, market prices of diesel fuel are tagged at 3 ringgit 78 cents per litre, while the subsidized fuel to the public costs 2 ringgit 15 cents per litre. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you would like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.